welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to talk about how to get the best video editing computer for you in 2025. Okay, there's going to be a lot of things that you have to consider before you can decide what is the best computer build for you, because really it's going to depend on what your situation is. And paired very closely to that is knowing what your starting budget is, how much you're willing to spend in total to get to that setup. So for example, I've got pretty much all the peripherals I need. I've got the monitor, the mouse, the keyboard, the speakers, a couple of microphones. Whereas, especially if you're just starting out and you don't necessarily have all these things, you don't have to jump to the nicest thing right out of the gate, but you do have to be able to recognize what things are essential for you to get up and running and then factor that into your budget to cover how much is going to go to those items versus how much is going to go to the computer. But if you have no idea where to start, here is generally what I will say. To do a custom build, I will generally recommend PCs. I am a PC person. If you want the computer to also do any form of gaming, I would also go the PC route. But if you're strictly using your computer to edit media, generally speaking, Apple is the better platform from that out of the factory. A lot of their computers are really optimized with the software that's already loaded. They already have a video editing and an audio editing software that are on there for free, and they are designed to work in conjunction with how the hardware is set up to really maximize the performance that you're getting. On top of that, the displays they have built in, not only on their laptops, but also on their iMac desktops, are pretty top notch. However, there's not as much support and not as many games that are available on those computers, so just be aware of that if that is something you want to use the computer for. So that's really step one is determining the requirements. What do you need and what would you like it to do above that? And if you've gotten to this point and you're really not sure what to do or how to do that, what I'm going to recommend is that with your budget, figure out how much of it is going to the computer alone. You can go to a website like PC Part Picker and what they will do is actually show you compatible parts. There's pretty much a solid build setup out there already for any increment of money within about a $50 range going from $500 on the low end to $2,500 or higher on on the top end. So if you're really just starting out and you don't know what to do or you're not as familiar with computer builds, go to a site like PC Part Picker, check out their builds, that will give you an excellent baseline and a template to work off of. So if your budget is let's say $700, you can type in $700 gaming PC, it will give you a list of all the parts and the cheapest website to buy them to hit that target. And before everyone jumps down my throat, yes this is a video about making a video editing PC and not a gaming PC. However, gaming PCs use a lot of the same resources. They typically have a strong processor, they have a strong graphics card, and they have ample RAM and storage. These are the same core components that you're going to need for a good video editing PC. So if you're really constrained to a specific price point, anything that's going to be good enough for gaming, generally speaking, will still be good enough for video editing, and that'll be true even if it's not 100% optimized for whatever software you're running. On their own, they're going to be fine. They're going to be very capable and you'll probably do what you need them to, but you still have the ability within that to swap out other parts to optimize one piece of performance versus something else. And the next consideration is what you need the computer to do as well as what you want the computer to do, including what type of software are you using. If you do editing that has a lot of really intense visual effects or a lot of AI overlays, the computing power to do those things is going to be more than if you're just doing simple edits where you're stitching videos together, maybe with a transition between them. And on a similar note, different editing software is preferred for a different type of hardware. Most editing software is very CPU intensive, so your processor. Some of them rely heavily on the graphics card and then some rely fairly heavily on the RAM. So if you already know the types of things that you're going to make and the software that you're going to be using to make it, look up online ahead of time what resources that that software likes to use and then you can prioritize your build to focus on those areas, thereby getting the best performance for your money. And let me give you an example. This computer that I built was for strictly video editing. I wanted the option to try playing computer games if I wanted to, but that was not the core purpose of this build. So for me and the software that I was using, I knew it was a lot more dependent on the processing power than it was on the graphics card. So if you have a software that you know you need to run, that is your core requirement of what power do I really need to prioritize to get that to run most effectively. So for example, on my PC, I originally spent about $1,200 to build it. The gaming PCs that I looked up at the time used a slower processor and a more 
powerful graphics card. Because I already knew the software I was going to use, I went with a stronger processor and a less expensive graphics card. So if you are like me, you've already got a computer set up, you've already got all the peripherals set up, generally the best bang for your buck is going to be to upgrade the current computer that you have to give it whatever capability you're looking for. And that's by upgrading either your processor or your graphics card typically, or adding on some storage or some RAM. For me personally, a big reason why I'm upgrading is that I'm on Windows 10. The security updates for those are going obsolete by the end of this year. And I would also have to upgrade a number of my hardware components in order to be able to run Windows 11 properly. However, when I was personally pricing out what I would need to do, I would need a new CPU, I would need a new graphics card, and because of both of those being different generations, I would need a new motherboard as well. By the time I add on RAM and a power supply, I pretty much would have an entirely new computer build. But if you only have a couple components to swap out to give you a very modern build, that's probably going to be the most cost-effective solution. And finally, don't forget to include the price of any new software that you're going to need on the new computer. Even though I already purchased editing software for this computer, when I go to the new setup, I would have to either switch over to a new program that's free, or go to one of the new subscription-based models where I have to pay for the software every year. And something else that kind of tags onto that capability, it won't impact how your software runs, but video editing takes up a lot of storage. You need a substantial amount of file storage, and you do have to factor that into your build. And one thing I want to note is that storage doesn't necessarily have to be internal. It doesn't have to be within the computer. You could get an external hard drive as well. But if you personally need to be mobile with this, maybe you're editing things on the road, you should be aware that it's probably easiest to get something like a laptop with a large amount of built-in storage. But if you do have to get an external hard drive, there are some that are fairly compact, so it's not the end of the world. Or if you have a desktop setup like mine, you can go anywhere from four to eight internal hard drives, plus a hard drive setup on pretty much every USB port you have. The options are just about endless in that situation. So that's the other thing for your core requirements is how long are you really going to keep the same build? And is the computer that you're going to buy or build now still going to be up to snuff in five to seven years time frame? And that's just something to consider. If you're in the position where you just want to get something to get you started and then you can upgrade later on, maybe as you increase your revenue, that's totally an option. And the easiest way to do that is generally a PC build. Well, let's say one of the requirements you have is mobility. You have to either go between your home and an office. Maybe you're traveling while doing some of these video edits. In those cases, you're going to be constrained to a laptop. Now, laptops, even in the PC world, are substantially harder to configure and upgrade. There's a lot more compatibility issues because of the form factor of everything. What I generally tell people who want to get a laptop is don't plan on being able to upgrade it internally, even if it is a Windows laptop. The only thing you can really upgrade is anything that could be plugged into it. So that does include external hard drives, that does include speakers and microphones, but the base laptop itself, as far as graphics and processing power, try to get the best that you can within your budget because chances are you're not going to be able to change that out easily. And to be transparent, that is the dilemma that I've recently had. As you can see, I've got really my good home setup here. This is my home studio. But ultimately, as my channel is progressing and as I'm doing different types of content, I need to be more and more mobile and to be able to do this on the road. Which, at least for me, means using a desktop is not a solution that I can rely on 100% of the time now. So when I looked at all the laptops that can handle video editing, I not only considered the graphics and processing power, I also considered screen clarity because color clarity is very important when you're doing things like this. I looked at a lot of computers in person. I did a lot of online research as well to check other people's recommendations. Time after time, based on what I saw and based on what I researched, Macs consistently had the best color clarity and their software is perfectly optimized for the build of their hardware. As a result of this, even if their stats on paper are the same as an equivalent PC computer, generally speaking, they come with a higher efficiency at that same processing power, which means you get more performance. That's really the benefit of basing your software on your hardware architecture, which is something that Mac really excels at. And the other component of that is Macs also come with software built in already to accomplish all these tasks. And while you can pay for really premium ones, the ones that come with it from the factory are still pretty good. And on the PC side of things, those are almost always softwares that you will have to pay extra for. Another selling point is that Mac laptops generally have a much better battery life than their PC counterparts. And that won't be critical for everyone, but for people who really need to be unplugged for the duration while they're moving around with their laptop, that is going to be a critical selling point. Now the downside though, is that if you got a Mac in a PC with very similar specifications, the Mac computer is gonna be substantially more expensive in most cases. Additionally, internal upgrades to the Mac, such as more RAM or more storage space, those get extremely expensive to the point that in my opinion, they're often not worth it. When I was recently shopping prices, looking 
looking at a MacBook Pro, going from a 512 gigabyte to a one terabyte internal storage hard drive, for the trim that I was looking at, that was a $400 jump in price. For the same price of that upgrade, by comparison, you could buy an external hard drive with pretty good read and write speeds with up to 16 terabytes of storage, which is 32 times more than the upgrade you would get for that $400. And if PC laptops are difficult to upgrade, Macintosh laptops are literally almost impossible unless you have a very advanced skill set. So if upgradability of anything other than storage is an issue for you, the Mac is probably not the choice for you. And even then, you pretty much have to be okay with carrying around an external hard drive and either transferring files temporarily onto the computer, or you have to hope that the external hard drive is fast enough that you can work directly off of it when it's plugged in, and hope that it's not a nuisance when you have a hard drive hanging down off the side of it with a computer sitting on your lap. So here's really my takeaways. I think if you're going for a laptop and it's going to be used specifically for video editing purposes, you're not going to do any gaming. The Apple products are definitely more expensive, but they do typically have more features included, especially as far as software is concerned. But on the desktop side of things, while iMacs are great, I still don't think they're really competitive given what you can get on the PC side. For the same price, you can get some very good high-end peripherals for both a monitor, keyboard, and mouse. You can get yourself a very high quality microphone and then build yourself one hell of a PC that has at least the same but probably higher specs. And you'll still have money left over for software at the end to the point you still will be coming in less than that iMac. So for most cases, if you're looking for a really powerful stationary desktop that's not going to be moved around, generally speaking, building a custom PC, at least for the price point you get it at, is probably the best option for most people. This is especially the case if you're trying to avoid obsolescence in the future because the iMacs are not really upgradable, whereas the PC parts are. But here's the one massive caveat that is an absolute no-brainer, especially at the price point it is offered. And that is, if you already have your peripherals, you already have a setup, and really all you need is the desktop itself that does the computing, for the money, the Mac Mini is one of the absolute best bang-for-the-buck computers that you can get to do something like this. The Mac Minis start in around a $600 price point, and you can get a very capable, reasonably updated unit for around $800, which, depending on your budget, should still leave enough money left over that you can build a pretty decent loadout around it. You can add in a pretty good dock, you can add additional cooling fans if desired, and more importantly, you can get a high-speed external hard drive that stays permanently plugged in and just sits on your desk next to it, and that is going to be much more cost-effective than upgrading the internal storage. When you're talking about performance per dollar, the M4 Mac Mini is almost impossible to beat at that price point. And the final thing I want to touch on, because this was a question I had when I was doing all this research and doing my personal search, is the MacBook Pro worth the money over a comparable MacBook Air? So for example, if you're getting the same amount of memory or a similar amount in the same processor, is it worth upgrading to the MacBook Pro at a much higher price point compared to the MacBook Air, which starts at $1,000? For this question, in my opinion, it really comes back to your use case. From a video editing perspective, the big difference between the two is that the MacBook Air does not have internal fans. When you are exporting videos that really heavily strains the processor, it's going to heat up a lot as a result. When it gets too hot, the system starts throttling its performance so that it doesn't overheat and get cooked. That does help with reliability at the expense of much slower video output. So if you're somebody who really has to put out videos constantly and you can't just leave it there for maybe a day or two to output everything, then the MacBook Air is probably not going to be the best option for you because even if you put like a fan pad underneath it, the way that it vents heat doesn't fully utilize that bottom surface, which means you're probably not going to get much more efficiency out of it. But the MacBook Pro, on the other hand, with the built-in cooling, does a much better job of maintaining temperature. That is really important, especially when you're doing high def, like 4K video edits, as well as doing any complex editing. So anything with a lot of visual effects or anything that's like AI generated, for the amount of computing power you need to do those things, the cooling is absolutely critical. If you're just splicing videos together, maybe cutting out some dead space, which is pretty much what I do, you could probably get away with a MacBook Air. But if there's even a chance that you're going to need that extra capability down the road, that you're going to progress to those better edits, it's probably in that case worth spending the extra money up front to future-proof yourself because they cannot be upgraded later on. So with all those considerations, what computer did I personally get? Well, for my situation, I wasn't trying to stick to a set budget. I was budget-minded and I wanted to get as much performance as I could for the dollar spent. Like I said, portability was also very important to me because of what I intend to do with it. And with all that in mind, I got this. 
a cardboard box. This is the best value for me, my use case, and my requirements. This is the MacBook Pro with the M4 Pro chip. I went with 24 gigabytes of RAM and I went with the 512 gigabyte hard drive. For me, the Pro chip with the upgraded CPU and GPU capabilities was worth the extra cost. However, as I already said, it was $400 to get an additional 500 gigabytes of storage. That was not worth it to me when I can get an external setup for substantially cheaper. And in fact, I actually already have and use a number of external hard drives and throwing one of those in a backpack next to this is really not that much of a concern for me. Now like I said portability was a big concern that is why I went with the laptop and for me because of the edits that I'm going to be doing the MacBook Air I think was going to get a little bit too stressed considering the type of edits that I'm planning to do with it. But you might be asking if portability was not important to you what would you have gotten instead? And the answer much to my surprise was the Mac Mini. Like I said, at the price point it comes at, especially if you already have the peripherals, if you already have the external storage, you simply cannot beat the combination of the processing power, the capability, and the robustness of the included software all within a very small package. It is so capable and such a bargain that I almost didn't get a laptop and still got the Mac Mini instead of this. But once again, that was just best for me and my needs and my considerations. My video editing computer is going to be strictly that. It's not going to do any gaming. I'm still going to retain my old desktop. I might do some occasional upgrades on that. That will stay as the gaming rig because if it fails, it's not critical at that point. And honestly, I've been a lifelong PC guy. I always use Android phones. I've never really been an Apple fan. So for me to sit here and say to you that they are some of the absolute best computers that you can get for the money, especially for this application, that should really say something to you about how good and how strong of a product it is. But anyhow, I hope this helps you guys out. I know I didn't make a lot of specific recommendations because really I can't make those until you know what you need your computer to do. I can't really answer that for you and if you can't answer it for yourself then you probably can't make a well-informed decision on which one is going to be best. But for me this MacBook Pro is the perfect fit for all my needs. I'm really excited to start trying this thing out and with that I want to thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.